What do you want? So, about a year ago something felt off in my marriage. We had been going through a disconnect but things seemed to be improving. Then I noticed little changes in my wife's behavior with her phone. She was texting much more than she usually and never leaving the phone out of her sight. When I looked at the text log for our cell account, I saw sometimes hundreds of texts per day with the same number and not one I recognized. The texts would start from the time she woke up, usually the other number texting first, and would go until she went to sleep. I did some investigating on my own and found out who the number was. It was another attorney that I know she knew but didn't work with or close with. They practiced two totally different fields of law but he was close friends with one of her bosses, which is how they met. Before all this happened, she would talk about him and tell me advice he's given her as a young lawyer and would tell me about how they spoke from time to time and became good friends. She would also tell me about how her boss would be upset if he knew they were friends and it could jeopardize her job. When I first saw the texts, I didn't think much of it. They were normally during the day into the evening. As time went on, they went through the weekends and holidays, literally all day. So, after seeing that she texted with him all New Year's Eve and a good part of Valentine's Day, I called her out on it. She swore up and down that it was nothing and that they were just really good friends. I asked her to see her phone so that I could see what they were texting about so much. She flat out refused saying how her privacy was important to her and that some of the texts were about his personal life that I had no business knowing. Long story short I said some threatening things towards him, she told him that and he cut all ties with her. I told her that if this really was something innocent and he really is just a good friend then ask him if he'll speak to me so we can straighten things out. Again, she basically refused saying that he won't return her calls or texts. Now knowing my wife and knowing this guy and what he looked like, I know nothing physical ever happened. That I know for sure, but it put a strain on things and the progress we were making improving our relationship. Fast forward now to last week. I've still been suspicious at times being that that last incident was never completely resolved. So, when I went up to bed one night, I found her sleeping with her phone in her hand and the screen still on. I took it out of her hand to put it on the night table and saw a text asking how I was being. Taken back a little I looked at who it was from and wondered why she would be talking to him about our relationship. The guy was someone we both know but she has known longer. We play volleyball in the summer and he is on one of the teams in the league. Her and her friends had become friends with the entire team over the last couple years so it wasn't too out of the ordinary that she would be taking to him. But still seeing that apparently, they had spoken about me at some point, I started to scroll though the conversation. In doing so I came across a text from him that was quite dirty, talking about all the things he was going to do to her in her dreams that night. Her response, although fairly vague, was still suggestive. And just the fact she responded to it was disturbing enough. So, I call her out on it and again she says it was nothing and just a vague response. Again, I ask to see the phone and she refuses. And again, it turns into a major blowout. She still swears that it was only a text and didn't go any further than that. From what I've seen there is a lot that says there is an affair, but there is also a lot that says there wasn't and it was only occasional texts. I scrolled some more in the phone and didn't see anything else like that or even really flirty even. Before I went further, she started to move and I thought she was waking up so I put the phone down and it locked. We do and have a fair number of problems in our relationship over the last two years. During talks, arguments about this current incident she told me how she does still love me and cares about me but can't find that physical connection right now, I know, red flag. Things went back and forth between us ending nowhere but an argument. She still swears it was nothing more than text, that it was stupid to do in the first place and feels she really didn't do anything wrong. Being that lately all of our conversations end in arguments, I wrote her a letter detailing all of our problems and what we need to do to at least try and fix them, as well as why thoughts, feelings and why I'm so upset about this. I ended the letter with how I want her to think about all this very seriously, and we'll talk when she gets back from her trip, she's away with our son so I know she's not with the guy. At this point in our problems, I have come to terms with if it's over, it's over and it's fine. I just want some kind of resolution to all this. My concern is the talk we're going to have and how to approach it in the most effective way. Like I said, if it's over then it's over, but getting a divorce really is the last thing I want. There is a young child involved. We do have a great family unit and I know it would be really though on him if we split. So, I'm kind of on the fence on how to handle things. I know it will be a fight, it usually is when I try to get straight answers from her. I did search out a marriage counselor last year that I thought would be perfect for us and help with our problems. We went to three sessions and then she said she wasn't going anymore because she didn't believe in it. Everyone else I've spoken to about all of this and our other problems have told me that I'm going about it the right way. Problem is it seems she doesn't want to commit to anything. After 13 years of marriage, two years of problems, only the last year being really bad, she still can't answer the question of if she wants to even try and work things out. The answer I get is I can't answer that right now. Like I said, the last thing I want is to get divorced. I do still love her, I don't want my child to grow up without me in the house, and we do still work very well together. But at this point all I really want from her is either a yes or no if she wants to stay married. When she found out I came clean, 
The affair I had online was with someone 1,000 miles away from me, not saying it was right, but it happened. It was completely emotional and not physical, she saw our conversations. I know that did damage to our marriage and she knows that I'm sorry and never meant for it to happen. I couldn't hide it as she hacked my account and saw it all. My issue here is that both times she's been caught all she does is refuse and deny, even when I've shown her that I have proof of it. Our marriage was improving over the last eight months until this recent find. And one of the things that does throw me a little is I saw a text from a few weeks ago asking where he's been and she hadn't heard from him for about two months. That's one of the things that makes me think the latest may not be a physical affair. Yes, what she did is similar to what I did, that's why I'm so suspect. But two wrongs don't make a right. I've made my mistakes, I've owned them, and I've been doing everything I can to make them right. There was a disconnect two years ago, a major failure in communication. We basically existed together for a year. She admitted that she had made a conscious decision to just do her own thing and not worry about me, and I admitted that I'd built up a lot of resentment because I felt she wasn't including me in her life. We decided to work on our relationship but she still felt we drifted too far apart. My argument to that was how do you know how far you drifted if you never really talked to each other? The woman I had an online emotional affair with started out as us talking about my marriage and our problems. She offered a lot of advice and a lot of it helped. My marriage and our relationship were improving until she found out about this other woman. Yes, I had feelings for her but my relationship with her still revolved around me talking and venting about my marriage. My big concern here is my child. The last thing I want to do is to hurt him in any way. If it weren't for him I most likely would have left two years ago when things first started. When she found out about mine, I told her everything. I told her that I never meant for anything like that to happen. I told her that there was never anything dirty about it. Yes, we talked about bonding but not with each other. My wife had hacked my account and saw all the conversations. She knew what we had talked about. We talked about it over and over again and she said she understood. We basically started from scratch again. We basically dated. Everything that she ever said that I did that bothered her I made a conscious effort to change. Her and her friends all said to both of us how they all saw the changes in me. And now going through this with her for a second time, the couple friends of hers that I've spoken to don't understand it. They don't understand why she would do it. They've told me that I had become everything that she said she wanted from me. I did leave information out in my previous post. So, let's start from the beginning. I've been married for 13 years. We've built a great life together, great house, a fantastic son, three dogs and three cats. Five years ago, the company I worked for sold. The new owner made more than many mistakes and ended up closing. The economy was down and my 16-year career turned into a dead end because of it. I was out of work for eight months but I was working doing something and making money for six of those eight months. Money did get tight and long story short, my wife blamed me. She said about my company closing that I should have seen it coming. She seemed to have animosity towards me since. After eight months I finally got a job in my field again and I felt things would go back to normal. Things between us didn't improve but they didn't get any worse. My industry had taken a major turn around that time and wasn't what it used to be. A year later I made the decision to switch fields and start a new career. My wife was already established in her career and was going full force. I supported every move she made and was by her side through it all. Sadly, it didn't feel she was behind me. I went to work for a large company yet very family oriented. A large majority of the staff have been there for 20 plus years. The money was much better and the company is great, but it is more demanding. So now fast forward to about two and a half years ago. I was focusing on my new career and she was advancing in hers. We would have arguments about time because she would need to work late or go to function and I would want to spend time with her. Her work started flowing over to nights and weekends as well. It drove me crazy. She was constantly on the phone, taking calls in the middle of our time or texting. She felt I didn't care about her career because I would get upset about how much time she dedicated to work versus how much she dedicated towards us. She kept moving in her direction of always putting work first, and I started slipping into a depression because of it. Knowing that any time I mentioned it would only start a fight, I never said anything about it. The disconnect grew larger. Our day-to-day -day around the house wasn't bad but it was nowhere near a marriage. By this point we both pretty much shut each other out. About eight months or so after this happened, we got in an argument about work again, and it turned into an argument about us drifting apart. I explained my views on it again and said how of course we disconnected, we never talk anymore. She still continued that it was more about work and my view on her career that caused it and the disconnect grew more. Anytime I brought it up she would turn it on me that it was my fault. Yes, I took blame but I also said how it was both of us that caused it. I had a void. I lived with a woman I loved that seemed to not want to pay any attention to me. I started to suffer from insomnia and spent many late nights on the couch. During that time, I also looked for things to do, let's face it TV at 3am is not existent, lol. I started playing an online game to fill the time. During this time, I started chatting with the same woman a lot. We talked about everyday things in our lives. She had been in a similar situation years earlier and ended up splitting. 
There were other similarities in our relationships as well and things just kind of clicked. Mostly we talked about my marriage and its problems, and she would give me advice and things to try that may help. I looked at her more as counseling than as an affair. Yes, we spoke about bonding, but bonding in general, not sleeping with each other. She made me feel wanted again, she filled that void I was missing. Apparently, my wife became suspicious of something and started snooping without my knowledge. She somehow was able to hack my account and she found out about this other woman. She saw most of our conversations and read what we wrote to each other. She confronted me on it and I denied it, why I still don't really know. Then she showed me that she saw the conversations and knew all about it. At that point I came clean, I told her everything she wanted to know. How it happened, why it happened, everything. I apologized every way I knew how. I showed her my phone, my email, everything. There was no reason to hide anything. From that point I made a conscious effort to work on everything she ever told me I did that bothered her. I listened to her instead of just hearing her, and I acted on that in a positive way. Her friends made comments to me and to her about how I seemed happy again and how I seemed like a different person, they were impressed. Everyone saw a difference, everyone but her. Things did improve a little but she still seemed very withdrawn. I didn't let that stop me and I just kept on doing what I was doing, hoping that I would eventually see a change. As time went on things stayed the same, no better but no worse. She was still withdrawn but there were some slight changes I noticed in behavior. She always had her phone in her hands, always texting and much more than usual. Conversation also becomes much shorter and she never seemed to leave her phone unattended. Growing suspicious of this I decided to log into our account and take a look at her text log. Looking over a few weeks I noticed the same number over and over again. It wasn't a number I knew so I became even more suspicious. As time went on, the frequency of the texts with that number increased to the point that they started at 6.30 a.m. Usually the other number texting first and going until the time she went to sleep, literally sometimes hundreds of texts per day. I did some investigating and found out who the other number was. It was another attorney that she knew but didn't work with. He actually practiced an entirely different field of law. But he was a good friend of one of her bosses and would sometimes attend the same functions. So, one day I asked her about it. I told her I happened to be looking at the account and I saw a lot of texts with the same number. She asked what the number was and I told her. She said, oh that's M, you know, I've told you about him. Then she went on about how they talk about law things and how he's kind of like a mentor. I thought that to be a little odd since they don't practice the same thing but whatever, I let it go. I keep checking the log from time to time and I notice that the texts now are all weekend as well. New Year's even till 1am and most of the day on Valentine's Day too. I don't say anything because I have no real proof of anything other than the frequency of the text. Then I decide to throw her a surprise party for her birthday. I have everything set, all our friends are meeting at a restaurant and I'm going to text one of her friends when we get close. Right before we leave the house her friends text me from her husband's phone because she left hers at home. Driving to the restaurant my wife is texting away, so I ask her who she's texting. She tells me C and I think well that's funny since C just told me her phone is at the house, so busted, she lied. I don't say anything to her and we have a great night. The next morning, I confront her on it. She says it's nothing and they've just become close friends and talk a lot. So, I ask to see her phone and see the text. She refuses. It turns into a big fight, a lot of things were said including me breaking his legs, but she still refuses to let me see the phone. She told me that they spoke about things in his personal life as well and they were none of my business. She tells him what I said and he decides to cut all ties completely. Being that she said he was such a good friend, I found that very shady. I told her that if it really is all innocent then let me talk to him and explain why I feel the way I do and we'll straighten it out. She tells me that he won't do it, that he wants nothing to do with her or me. At this point I know communication with him is over and I know it was never a physical affair. I've seen what he looks like and definitely not even close to her type, so I let it drop. Over the next few months things improved a lot, almost to the point of a normal marriage, not so much a loving marriage, but a normal one. About eight months later I noticed that she had become more withdrawn again and couldn't think of why. Things had been good, a couple little bumps but nothing major. This goes on for about a month, this February, and I still couldn't figure out why. Then one night I went up to bed and saw her out cold with her phone in her hand with the screen on. I go to move it to the nightstand and look at the screen. There's a message there for a guy that we play volleyball with in the summer, not the same team, just in our league, and he's asking how I'm being. Not how I am but how I'm being. I find this odd, why would she talk to this guy about our relationship? So I start to scroll back in the conversation. I go back not too far and see a text from him being extremely dirty about what he wants to do to her and tells her to dream about all the things he'll be doing to her. The next morning, she replied saying how her dreams had pleasurable experiences. At that point she started to roll around in bed, I was in shock and I put the phone down and the screen locked. The next morning, I confronted her about it. She told me that sometimes he sends things that are a little inappropriate. So, I show her a picture on my phone of that text and ask, you think that's just inappropriate? We go back and forth about it with her apologizing and I once again ask to see her phone. 
Same as last time she refuses. This time she says how her privacy is important to her and she won't show me the phone. So, I call her out again right there that she's having an affair. She swears up and down that it never went further than the text and how that was the first time he ever sent something like that. I kept asking her what would even give him the idea that sending something like that would be okay and she had no answer. At one point she even accused me of creating a situation that doesn't exist over a stupid silly text. The one thing that bothered me still was that there was a lot that said there is an affair and there's equally the same that says it didn't go further than the text so as the days went on the arguments about it just kept happening so I decided to stop talking to her altogether other than important household type things. I still said goodbye when I left for work and hello when I got home but that was it. That was a few days ago. Since then, conversation has resumed but no mention of the text or our problems. Being that our conversations all turn into arguments lately, I decided to write her a letter. I outlined all of our problems and what we need to do to try and fix them, but that it would take a conscious effort on both parts this time if we had any chance. I also did talk about the text, why it bothered me and why I felt the way I did. I left the letter as read this, seriously think about it and we'll talk. But we do need to talk because neither one of us can go on living like this. My biggest issue here is that I don't want to get divorced, there's a young child involved. I may be able to swallow some of my pride so that my child grows up with me around all the time, but I can't keep living without a decision of how or what we're going to do to move forward or if we're going to move forward at all. Mentally I'm okay if we get divorced, other than missing my kid. But a decision needs to be made, I can't go on with her telling me that she's not sure what she wants to do. It's getting ridiculous. There were no signs of her having an affair during that year. We still went out together with friends, it was more like when she went to do things, hobbies that she enjoyed she never asked if I wanted to join her. The times when I asked her about why she did that, she would tell me that she just felt that I would have said no so she didn't bother. Other times that she went out without me and said she went out with friends, either her or one of her friends would usually post something on Facebook so there was evidence that she was where she said she was. There was the rare occasion where I could say I wasn't 100% sure if she was where she said she was, but like I said, that was rare. If anything was going on, I don't think it could have been an affair, the frequency wasn't there. It was maybe only three times during the course of that year. Through all of this, my biggest concern has been my son. I know he sees and hears more than anyone thinks. But I also know, just from typical little kid comments to his daddy, that he would be absolutely crushed if we did split. He had made a comment the other night when the three of us were lying in bed watching TV. I had to go to the bathroom and went to get up. He rolled over on top of me and said you're not leaving. You're mine, I'm keeping you here forever and ever I laughed and said, dude I need to pee, he said okay, well come right back. I almost cried when he said it, but the one thing that I thought of was that she was right there and heard it. If anything would give her a kick to want to start trying to work things out, I would hope it would be for his sake. I'm not saying we need to stay together for him, but we need to at least try to work on things. After 13 years of marriage, I can't think of breaking up because of two bad years that we really never did anything about. Unfortunately, since we never really addressed the original problems at the beginning, things have already gotten out of hand. Like I had said about her first texting incident, I really don't believe that things got physical. Know who the guy was and what he looked like, the chances of that really were less than likely. I'm not saying it was impossible, as at this point, I really don't feel I know who she is anymore, but even given everything I know about it and the way our relationship has been I would be really really surprised. As far as the guy I found out about recently, I do believe the chances of a physical affair are much higher. But like I had said about this latest one, I haven't seen the opportunity for a physical affair to be happening unless she's skipping out on work to see him. And given that he's a teacher and in school most of the afternoon, I just don't see the time for a physical affair. She's not out late after work and she hasn't been out on the weekends without me or without one of the friends or her posting something on social media proving that she is where she said she was. When I was looking through her texts with him, I also saw one asking about where he had been because she hadn't heard from him in about two months. So, like I said, there are things that yes, it's a physical affair and things that say no, it's not likely a physical affair. Which is why I'm having such a hard time digesting all of this. Our intimacy level was okay at the beginning, not great but okay. It has dropped off in the last few months to non-existent now. The last few times she wanted to have bond, she passed out drunk. Her drinking has increased greatly over the last few months and has become another problem that I have been addressing frequently. As I had said, she doesn't go out whenever she wishes or without telling me. She actually only goes out once a month or so with friends. The rest of the time she's out with me or she's home. I have confronted the OM about the message he sent. He said that nothing has ever happened and that they've never seen each other off the volleyball court. I asked him if there had ever been other messages like the one I saw and he said that there may have been a couple but nothing like the last one. That mostly they just texted about life and family and flirted but nothing directly dirty. Do I believe him? Not 100%, but like I said the other messages that I looked through were not dirty. That's why I said that there's reason to believe yes and reason to believe it was just texting. I am not a submissive person. 
My dominance is something that usually starts the arguments. But I also know and have learned over our 13 years of marriage that direct confrontation on anything puts her in full defensive mode almost completely shutting down. We're both very strong-minded and stubborn people. That is why I wrote the letter I wrote to her talking about all our problems including this arm. I let all my feelings be known and I gave ways we could work on things to try and work things out and improve our relationship. I figured that since she always goes on the defensive, as do I, that this was the best way to get things across with arguing halfway through the conversation. I gave her the letter a couple days telling her to read it, think about everything and then we'll talk. We have had some family things going on since I gave it to her and now, she's away with my son, two of her friends and their kids being that school's closed. I didn't go with them because of work but I was invited. When they left, I quietly asked her if she got the letter. She said she did and that we'd talk when she gets back which will be later this week. That's one of the reasons I've turned to this forum. I have confronted her and I plan to again when we talk. All I want to hear is the truth, no matter what it is. But at the same time, I know if I push too much that she'll just shut down and the conversation will be totally unproductive. I don't want to get divorced and I actually don't believe she does either. I think if that was her goal that it would have happened already, as do her friends. But I need answers as to what she's thinking and why. If she doesn't want to be together that's fine, so we end it. I've come to terms that that's a very good possibility at this point. I would think that since she's been caught twice now that if that's what she really wanted that would be her choice, but it doesn't seem to be. And I don't understand why she would want to keep living a life where she's constantly sneaking around and hiding things knowing that I'm suspicious and watching her. Like really, who would want to live like that? It just doesn't make sense to me. I know teachers have off hours but my point is that with her job and schedule she doesn't, or at least not enough to make an affair work. I know that sounds like I'm in denial but I'm just thinking logically about it. I have told her that I've lost all trust in her. I've told her how she's done what she's done and I've done what I've done and she needs to just own it like I did. I told her that if she does want to really try and work on things, that she needs to make an effort. Her view on it the last year has been to just see what happens. Well, that hasn't worked so it's time for a new plan. But before that new plan can start, she needs to make a decision on if she actually wants to. She usually goes to bed before I do so when I go up. I always look to see if her phone is unlocked like it was when I found the messages. That's the only way I'll get into the phone. I do have a vehicle tracker but I haven't been using it long and it hasn't shown anything suspicious yet. I tried counseling last year. You could tell she didn't want to be there and as cordial as she was being, I knew she wasn't being totally open. Then after the third session she told me that she wasn't going anymore because she didn't believe in it. I'm not an idiot and I'm not living in complete denial. I know what I've seen, texts, phone records, behavior, reactions, responses, all of it. I do see the big picture and what will most likely be the end result. My problem is that I do love her, I love our family dynamic, in social settings we do get along and have fun, and no, I don't want that to end. I know it doesn't have to be long hours at a fancy hotel, but drive time, her schedule, and the time that she gets home it just doesn't add up. Yes, it's entirely possible but it just doesn't seem realistic. It's not like she's out late after work or on the weekends. Wife is an attorney and the OM is a teacher, something does not add up. Her career is more demanding than mine. However, I think she makes it more demanding than she needs to. She is still a young attorney, only practicing around 7 years, and she constantly feels she needs to prove herself. One of my problems is that I wish she would feel the same need to prove herself to me. Anytime I talk about bad days or stresses in my career, she compares them with what she has on her plate. This is another thing that has always bothered me, we're not in completion but she always makes it seem that we are. I consider my future and well-being all the time, but I put my son's future and well-being before mine. I don't want him growing up without me around all the time, it would crush him if I wasn't there. And I don't know if he would really understand why I wasn't there. I also think, although I would hope she never would, but I think that she might play it off to him that I wasn't there because I didn't want to be there anymore. If it weren't for my son, this would all be a fairly easy decision. But adding him and his feelings to the equation really puts a lot more stress on things. I know the first OM was married. I did search out his wife on social media and thought about sending her copies of the text logs just asking what she thought about it. But like I said, I truly feel that that one never went physical and after our big blowout over it, I did see that the text stopped. Her data usage went up for about two weeks but then went back to normal, so I know that she did still text with him on WhatsApp, but I know that it did stop. After a month of seeing, she wasn't texting with him anymore I didn't feel the need to contact the wife. They have a disabled son, like seriously disabled, I honestly felt bad for his wife. I knew for sure that he and my wife weren't talking anymore and there was no reason to risk destroying his marriage and leaving the wife as the sole caretaker of the disabled son. The last OM, I'm not 100% sure if he's married. I know he was married and has a child. I have met this man, played in a volleyball league against him and have had drinks with him in a group. I'm 99% sure that I did see a ring on his finger. The problem is that I don't know his last name. 
I've looked on my wife's friend list on Facebook and the lists of other friends of his that I know from volleyball and I don't see him so investigating him is a little difficult. The other thing that I know is that over the past year, when she talks to her or our friends about our relationship, she doesn't tell them the whole story. She tells them enough about a problem that makes it look like I was the cause of the problem. I caught her doing this once, I walked up behind her one night and heard exactly what she said and called her out on it in front of the person she was talking to. Her explanation, that's just how I feel. So yes, I think she's not showing the texts because she wants to protect her own ass, but I don't think she's trying to only protect her from any incriminating texts with these men. I think she's also afraid of me seeing what she's told people about our relationship and how she twists things to make me look like the bad guy. Talking with two of her best friends about this recent incident I realized that even more. After them hearing my side of things that have happened, I was told by them how after talking to me they were confused about the whole thing and that they feel like they don't know who she is anymore. Like the whole situation is just odd at every level. It's clear that she's hiding things from everyone, including her friends. From what I know, she still hasn't told her parents that we've been having problems at all. My comment, part 2 will come tomorrow, would OP overcome this and move out of this relationship?